Hey everybody, this is Diliana Milleva and I'm excited to bring you Menopause Smack Easy, a podcast designed to provide you tips and strategy to navigate the changes in woman's body, mind and spirit with more grace and ease. I appreciate you tuning in. Remember to like, subscribe and turn on your notifications so you are updated of each episode release. All right, let's dive in. Hello, everyone, for another amazing episode of Menopause Made Easy. I'm Diliana, your host, and today I have with me Elian Han, the professional wife who spent mostly in the fitness and the wellness industry. She's a master coach and she has a yoga studio and private practice in uh, Texas. She wrote the award-winning bestseller biography, 60 Mile from Neumanns. It's, she's a speaker and TV show host also. Alien is specialized in midwife and transformational coaching. She owns a yoga and fitness studio as well. Uh, she's known as a uh, coach approach, uh, sharing her wife lesson with a good dose of joy, humor, and energy. Welcome, Alien, today. Thank you, Dilian. I'm so excited to be here on your podcast, on your show with you. Excited to talk about that. And my coach approach is just straightforward, right? Dancing around the bush, just it is what it is. We have to deal with it. So, yes, thank you. Flying hormones here in Texas because it's very hot. So, <laughs> yeah, let's talk about how you come up to your career path and how that's happened that you get inspired coaching after you have many years of teaching yoga, how yoga actually help you to go through this uh, journey of menopause. Yeah, absolutely. The menopause is a few years ago. I am post at the moment, but honestly, I had a yoga studio since 2005 and I had many classes during the day and fitness industry, yoga industry was my uh, profession for the last 30 years. I've been in front of classes and worked with groups and the flow. Now I am getting older, the flow into coaching and life coaching and, and helping people also by sitting down and talking about you know, there are issues. I call that issues in your tissues, not just issues in your tissues, but also issues up here, right? Talking about it has always been, you know, part of my journey anyway and what I was doing. So going a little bit more into the career of coaching right now is a very, just a very organic natural career flow, I should say, for me. I started very early in the dance and then into the fitness industry. So that was always, for me, a good way of helping myself, I guess, through hard times in life, right? I was just always happy if I moved and if I did something and if I exercised. And later in life, when, you know, a lot of exercise always comes with a lot of injuries as well, ultimately, right? You never know if you're really doing too much or not enough. So if you are, you know, coming from the days like I did, that I had to take it a little bit slower when it comes to knee and hip issues, I more and more in the early 2000s got interested in yoga and teaching yoga. And so really slowly that whole path of really being busy with fitness and sweating and not being able to walk the next day went to into a slower pace of yoga and meditation, you know, more mind, body, spirit stuff, right? And talking to people about life and helping people more into the coaching way. And that ultimately evolved into coaching and writing and, and speaking a lot and writing about it in uh, my book, about life's lessons. But still, for me, it's very important to motivate, to inspire people to move all the time. And in that flow of a little bit of a slower pace when it comes to the fitness, more into the wellness, I also worked with people for years in a uh, addiction setting, addiction recovery, I should say. And in recovery, it became extremely clear to me that people could really help themselves by putting exercise, meditation and yoga first, right? To help themselves physically. I also help people and say, well, you need to call that your outside, right? Put your outside on, feeling good about yourself. Get your sexy back. One of the main themes in my new book, getting your sexy back, means different things for anybody. But it's feeling good physically so that you have way more resistance emotionally and mentally if you are feeling good. And that was just one of the big things that I really picked up on. It was good for me. It was good for my patients in the days. And it's good for my clients right now to know that if they are even in coaching sessions with me, 
that I also encourage them and set programs and set goals and make efforts to help them through their physical journey, feeling good physically as well, because we just need that guard. I think it helped me process a lot of things in the past, just movement in, in general. And I use it a lot as a way to help ourselves through physical issues and emotional issues, right? So yeah, that was a little bit of my path going into what I do now from little Miss Valerie now. So how actually in which aspect of yoga or meditation help you most with your symptoms? I think it was most of it was trying to slow down through breathing and meditation and the slow movement. You know, it's, I always say it's not about touching your toes. It's about the journey down, right? Just really kind of feeling that you are emotionally and spiritually getting in touch with your body, that you are trying to feel and trying to understand where the pain is. There's a nice way of saying, I always told my patients, tell my clients, no, we have to find where you are feeling pain, right? You have to find it by going to that place in your body. It's a very somatic approach what I do right now. So through breathing and through meditation and being still, it's a very good place to find where you're pain is that you might have held on to for too long. It might be something emotionally. It might be something mentally that has manifested in our bodies as trauma many times does, right? And so it manifests in our body. So we have pain. We have issues. We need to go to the place where we feel it. And then from that place, we need to start healing. So I say, find it and feel it. And then we can accept it and heal it from that place, right? So finding the place where we are holding emotions, holding maybe physical pain because we're still holding on to something and we can't let go. It was for me very healing to do so when I first got introduced to a slower pace of work in general, right? Exercise, yoga, making that transition. For me, it was very lightening. I really also came from the days that that was always fast paced. And so I had to slow down and really understand that meditation and breathing techniques were a very good way of trying to find myself where I needed to be. And also trying to find out where I was holding pain, where I was holding trauma, even in my body. And now, you know, that with somatic work, with holistic work, I try to find out a lot of times where people are holding pain in their body when they come to work with me. Because what we are still having going on here, that might be really old, it might be from the past, but it still kind of gets triggered. You know, when we talk about self-esteem, when we talk about courage, taking on new things, going through big transformations, career change, kids leaving the house, having to move to a new place, a divorce, loss of a loved one, all these big transformations in life. If that happens, we all work that inside and we all hold on to it sometimes in a form of pain if we cannot really process it well. And I can see that. And you know how that is because you are a healer like that. It is one of the things when you see people come in and they're, you know, their posture is hunching a little bit forward and their shoulders are up. And, you know, I see my clients coming in like this, just really holding on to a lot instead of, ta-da, I'm ready to attack the day. Right? Does that make sense? So what I did with it, coming from the fast pace, da, 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 da. I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. I learned to slow down and I learned to start finding ways to accept myself and to see things in myself. What was the biggest challenge during this transition period for you? Having patience. And I think that's for a lot of people, right? I do not have a lot of patience. So if I find a way to fix it, we better fix it fast. And that doesn't work with meditation. In the beginning, I remember, this is hysterical, I remember I went to a wonderful, wonderful meditation resort in Colorado. I went all weekend and I was going to be there and it was going to go fully integrating and I wanted to learn this. And it was this Taoist meditation resort. And I came in and I had to stand up. And we were doing that first morning standing meditation. It was just standing still. and. I could not stand still. <laughs> like, I was really thinking that this was just not going anywhere. What is he doing? What are we doing all together? And there was tons of people around me. And you know how you're just in the beginning kind of really almost 
you know, you're going to do something silly because it was so quiet. It was not music either. And there was not really a lot of guidance. It was really the whole thing was to prepare yourself for stillness and not moving. And I'm the mover and the shaker, right? So I talk with my hands and my whole body. So, oh no, this is so boring. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. So I got really, really scared that I just, this was just not ever going to be something for me. It was so quiet. And I opened my eyes and I looked next to me and you could see when people are not comfortable because they're tweaking and twitching, right? Your nose and, you know, your ear. And we had to learn to let everything go and be so still that nothing in our body was moving at all. So that was the hardest part for me to learn, to be ultimately really still and to have a lot of patience towards trusting the outcome of practicing meditation. Not just having that instant gratification like, oh, I fell asleep. Right? It was great. I fell asleep. <laughs> right? <laughs> I always had a lot of meditation classes and there was, you know, sometimes these classes, you know, everybody would come in and say, oh, I'm ready for my nap. This is not the intent of meditation. You're not supposed to fall asleep. It's good if you need it, but, you know, it is just to recognize that you have thoughts and put those thoughts on the leaf and let them float away on the water. That's a reminder me. I had also a student of me that also to fall asleep very often when we did the meditation and breathing. Just <laughs> very often you say, okay, thank you. I slept very well. <laughs> <laughs> I had in many meditation classes and courses, and ultimately I developed a very good way of doing guided meditation myself and helping people through that half an hour or 20 minutes. You know, I started with five or 10, and then we would discuss it, and then we would add some to it, and we would go a little longer. So I learned from myself and also for others that a very good way to start with meditation is just start with simple guided meditations about breath or about your body, just a simple body scan. And start with five or 10 minutes to get comfortable with it and practice if you can actually really let go of all those anxiety thoughts, right? That are going, what about tomorrow? So if you can let them go for a little bit, then you're in good shape. If you can take 10 deep breaths and you can focus on it and you can feel it, you can heal it, then it's really a good start. Because people also, I think, do have many times kind of like a somewhat twisted information about meditation, right? Like you can't think, you know, you practice not thinking or you have to be really still and, and it's for an hour and I can't do that and all that stuff, you know, those little stories that we have about meditation and misconceptions. Of course, that's not true. So uh, how much you use the breath, the breathing uh, in your practice, in your meditation, how that help you personally also? Yeah, I think a lot of people, I had to pay attention to it because I came even from a dance and an exercise world and we were breathing to get through the fitness class. You, know, you kind of had to, right? Or out of breath was actually more popular than focusing on your breath. You know, the fact that you were out of breath was a good thing. But way later in my career, I actually understood that focus, understanding your breath and understanding and taking the focus to your breath is a very good thing to do because I also teach, for instance, Tai Chi and Qigong classes. And that's the same thing. We have to learn to guide that energy through your body. And we have to learn to... Breathe that life force in, that energy in, that take it all in and kind of cleanse, right? And then when you exhale, you can let go of negative feelings. When I started to get better at that, I was able to teach it and I implemented it. The breathing technique I also implement always in my meditation. So to start with, just simple breathing techniques. If it's a beginner's group, for instance, I would start with box breathing, right? Just four, four or square, or however people want to call that. Four inhale, hold for four, four exhale, hold for four. And then when we get better at it, we just really go to seven, in, hold for four, eight, slow out, right? And if people are uncomfortable with that or with counting, I tell them just go slower and slower and slower and make your exhale a little bit longer than your inhale. And I also give people the 
instructions sometimes, especially in my coaching, my life coaching clients, to take the practice at home for 10 minutes a day, five to 10 minutes a day, to take five deep focused breaths a day because it's proven. It's, it's just fact that that helps us calm down. What are you working on right now? What is the, your project that you're working on right now? Well, I'm excited to tell you that I'm writing a new book. The working title right now is How to Get Your Sexy Back, 26 Ways to Attain Mature Adult Status, right? To, to attain adult status. It's a life coaching book and it goes, it's a workbook and it comes with a course that I'm starting in September. So I'm having a couple of webinars the end of August about it. Some free information webinars where I invite people to take the eight week course. The eight week course is really about mindset and about transformation out of anxiety into a mindset of positivity, right? Into a mindset of, I don't have anxiety anymore because I know what to do. That is the outcome of the course. I want to help people just to release any form of anxiety, be in control of it, knowing what to do. And that has not only to do with life coaching lessons, it also implements some of the simple yoga practice and some of the breathing techniques. So ideally, what kind of people you fit perfect for your course? People that in that people that are in well, people that have anxiety, right? People that have deep anxiety. Those are my first clients that I work with. People that suffer from anxiety and stress. People that are suffering from underlying courses. Even it might be just where I say transformation, right, in life that are going through big changes in life. I have a lot of clients that work through PTSD or grief and loss. That's a big transformation. PTSD trauma, you know, those things keep playing up and acting up in our life. So I work with people on that. My number one catchphrase is always, if you suffer from anxiety, then, you know, come see me or let me help you or get a free consultation call, right? I have a free call for everybody. And I'll give that to you in a minute that people can just sign up for and say, hey, I would love to talk about then anxiety, should I be just a client one-on-one or should I join your course, right? The eight-week course is a little bit more spread out, gives a lot of information about also not just the mental and emotional things that you can do for yourself to prevent anxiety, but also physically to become stronger, you know, to be in that space of I know what to do when I feel it coming, right? It's all about I know what to do when I feel it coming. We have to recognize it. And that's why I always say if you go inside in the meditation moment, then you have to kind of feel where you're holding pain. Because a lot of people even physically come to me and say, I have a lot of back pain. And well, that might be that chronic pain might be just a result of the fact that you're always stressed out or that you're holding on to so many things in your mind or so many things from the past. Tell me about your show also, what it's about your show. It's about all that. Yes, thank you. I have this show Saturdays. It's called Aliens Joy on the Win Win Women platform. And that platform that goes out to my YouTube and it goes out to Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire. You can catch it live on Saturdays at 11 o'clock PT or 2 o'clock ET. So that's the live version of it. But I have the shows also uploaded on my YouTube My television show is about all this, right? It covers anxiety. I have guests on that we'll talk about their coaching practice, maybe a book that they wrote, maybe the things that they do. You will be on my show to talk about all this, right? Women issues. And the fun thing is that Win Win Women platform, I have to add that, is a platform for women. So we have a lot of show hosts. And everybody fills an hour a day, a couple of hours a day, right? We have hopefully or almost been 12 hours of television a day going out by different show hosts. I'm only one of them on Saturdays, but we provide constant information for women on all kinds of different subjects. So my show is about anxiety, about coaching, about mentoring, about the things that I do in the mind, body, spirit field. But there are shows about finance, there are shows about women's health issues, there's uh, shows about home, uh, diets, uh, nutrition, any topic that you can imagine that is good for women to know. So it's a lot of information out there. 
I hope the listeners can uh, join your show too and also reach out about uh, your course for sure. Let me know what inspires every day, Elian. What inspires me? Oh, gratefulness. Every moment, every day, every morning. I love, love, love what I do. I absolutely love what I do. And so I never have a problem waking up in the morning and being very excited to go to work. Of course, I work for myself. I work with many groups and, and clients one-on-one, but I love what I do. So it's sharing what I've learned in life, you know, by not always doing the right things, right? And I, ultimately, I grew up, hopefully, someday I will, and, and get those life lessons for myself. And I love to share those life lessons. So I'm really uh, just loving life. I'm good at staying in the moment. I am not going back to the past. I have no business going back. I love moving forward and come up with new courses and create new ideas and uh, maybe do a retreat next year, right? We've been talking about that, you and me, and just being with women and sharing. Uh, it's the best thing. It's the best thing. So I love what I do. My son inspires me. I have one son. He's a, a great human being. He inspires me. And I have a wonderful life with uh, my partner. So, yeah. What is the final thought? What is any final thoughts that you get up up today? My final thought is a quote from my book that I would love to share. In my book, 60 Miles from Neiman's, that came out last year, it's available on Amazon. The quote that I said in my book is, life does not get any easier, but you will get better at it. And unfortunately, that is very true. Life does not get any easier. I have to tell everybody that. I'm not making any promises. Life can just be difficult all the time, but you get better at it. And if you feel what I would love your listeners to know, if you feel that you're stuck, come see us. Come see us. Come see you. Come see me. Come see us and come be with us. Let me help you. Amazing. Beautiful. Thank you so much for your wisdom today, Elian. It was such a pleasure to have this conversation with you and uh, to hear your thoughts about yoga, meditation, breathing. Uh, thank you, everyone, to listen to us every time. Uh, don't uh, forget to share, like, and subscribe to Meropause Made Easy. And i see you next time for more wisdom. Thank you for tuning into Menopause Made Easy. You can check out more episodes on Apple, Spotify, eHeart Radio and your favorite podcast apps. Check out the show notes for any website linked to this episode, including where to connect with me on social media. I appreciate you tuning in. Remember to like, subscribe and turn on your notifications so you'll be updated of each episode release. And visit me at menopausesupportacademy.com for all podcast updates as well. Appreciate you dropping by.